Wayne Fox with another quick Lightroom tip. This one about Adobe Lightroom's new ability to handle the 32-bit file. If you've done any HDR photography, you might know how useful that could be. For those that aren't really familiar with why you would need to do this, let's talk briefly about HDR photography. Anytime the dynamic range of our scene exceeds the ability of our sensor to record that, the only solution is either let some of our scene clip to white or clip to black, or to create multiple images at different exposures and then combine them in some type of a technique which would be termed an HDR. The most common way this is done is people will take a shot that exposes for a foreground, one that exposes for a sky, and then they will mask the sky from the one image into the other image. That's actually a technique to do HDR. There are several other techniques, but for complicated HDR what most do is use a program which will combine the multiple images and then let them tone map those into a visual image that's pleasing. And the tone mapping part is the key to this new ability in Lightroom. When you combine three images like that to hold all that data, you need to do that in a 32-bit mode. So in this case, I were to take this image, this image, and this image, and combine those. The only way that file could hold all of the data of all this information here and all this information up here is to use a 32-bit file. Well, the problem with a 32-bit file is it looks pretty bad, as we'll see in a few minutes. And so the challenge then is to take that 32-bit file and basically tone map it down into a 16 or 8-bit file that visually is appealing. Many programs will do both of these processes, but if you have Lightroom and Photoshop, you can now do the entire process with those tools and when you're doing it with Lightroom, you're now working with a system that you're very familiar with because you're using all the same panels, your basic panel, your uh, adjustment panels, your tone curves, all of those tools that you use for developing raw images, you can basically use to do this tone mapping. So maybe an example will make it a little easier to understand. Let's uh, plunge in here. So the first step is to take our three files and merge them into a single file, which has to be done in Photoshop. If I right click on an image and I go to edit in, merge to HDR Pro and Photoshop, this will send these three files over to Photoshop where it will basically combine them all into one file. Once it merges the file, we are presented with this Merge to HDR window. And the main purpose of this is to allow you to do tone mapping in Photoshop. And this is the tone mapping window. So this is where you can change different things. You can control things like edge glow. You can change your gamma, which adds or subtracts contrast. You can try to bring your detail back. And you've got things like highlight and shadow. So it, it looks a little similar to Lightroom, but it's not using the same camera raw engine that Lightroom does. So what we're going to do because of this new ability in Lightroom is instead of that, we're just going to say, you know what, let's leave this as a 32-bit file. This slider here doesn't really do anything. It changes the brightness of the screen, but it's only for the preview. Notice the word preview there. On some images, you may need to remove ghosts. Uh, if there's an object moving through, maybe slightly moving through the scene, that's the purpose of that. This was, this uh, picture didn't have anything moving, so I don't need to do it. So all we need to do now is say, let's just hit OK. This will finalize the process of merging the files. Here you can see our dialog box that was creating the file. How long it takes to do this depends on how powerful your computer is. Mine's actually pretty powerful, but these captures are from an 80 megapixel back. So it's a pretty intense process, but we're just about done here. And now we have our merged file in Photoshop. Now, as I, know, as I mentioned, it doesn't look good, but that doesn't matter. All we need to do now is save it. So we can go to File and Save, or in a Mac, hit Command S. I assume on a PC you can hit Control S. Don't do a save as. Now you notice as soon as I did a save, it went from untitled 
to give it a name of one of the files that was used, and then it adds, in this case, the word edit, and because I've done this two other times, it says edit three. If we switch back to Lightroom, we'll see that that file is now in our folder here. Let's hit the I button, and now you can see that this is our edit three image. So now, because it's a 32-bit file, if we go into the develop module and open our panel, as I pointed out before, we now have minus 10, plus 10 stops. Now this image didn't need anywhere near that to handle it. So what I want to do is I want to try to pick an exposure which puts my mid-tones about where I think they should be. That's right in here. And I'm ready to use Lightroom to do what is commonly called tone mapping. Take this 32-bit file and create a version which looks good in 16 bits. So there are quite a few ways to do it. A lot of guys like to, first thing they like to do is go into the tone curve because it's be, be such a large dynamic range that's been uh, put in this file. Most of the time, the first thing you need to do is change the contrast and you can either do it with a contrast slider or most people would rather use the curve. And let's just go ahead and go strong contrast. But normally, what I'm going to do is go back up here now and fix my exposure just a little bit. And let's go about there. Now I'm going to pull my whites down because I've everything's clipping. Watching my histogram. I'm going to throw the option key down so I can kind of tell when stuff begins to blow. So right there, so those are blown. I'm going to pull them down a little bit more than that then. And now I'm going to pull my highlights down to move that sky. And you can see my sky start to pull back in. Looks like I need to pull my whites down just a little bit more. And I might need to go ahead and pull the exposure down just a little bit to get my sky. Okay. And then pull my shadows Pull the blacks up just a little. And so the point here is I'm using tools I'm very familiar with to tone map this image. Um, let's just do a few other things. We want to bring out this canyon here, so I'm just going to go ahead and add an adjustment brush. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the O key so I can see where I'm painting. Gives me a mask. I'm just going to use a soft brush in there. Okay. Now let's hit O again. Let's bring that exposure up a little bit in that area. Okay. Probably need to add a tiny bit of clarity. Most images look better with a little bit of clarity. And of course, most of the time with my camera, I need to add a little saturation. And now I can tell that I've got the color coming in that I'm probably a little on the cool side. So I'm going to warm it up just a little bit. Get that nice and warm. Trying to make sure my sky doesn't go too yellow up in here. And now a few other quick things I do. I'd probably add a little, little bit of a vignette at the bottom with a graduated filter. Pull that down just a little bit. I might even go, bit, go down to my post-crop vignetting and darken my corners down just a tiny bit. I usually add a little feather to that when I do it. So what I've done now is I've used Lightroom to let's get rid of that real quick i've used lightroom to tone map my image we're going to close the navigator and if we show where we started that was the raw image which looks really bad but all that we care about is it has all that data and then by just using some of our tools in lightroom that we're familiar with we can tone map that into a visual image that we like where our sky has detail in it, our shadows have detail, we have some contrast. And you know, I'm not saying this is where I would finish. Um, I would probably do quite a bit more work on this image, uh, but it's a pretty good start. So there you have it. That's how you can use Photoshop to combine your HDR images and then Lightroom to tone map them. And I think you'll find you'll get better results out of Lightroom than you will Photoshop's HDR tone mapping. I have another tool I use for this that's made by Nick, and it's also a pretty cool 
HDR tool. It's one of the better ones out there and I like its interface and it's actually really good for people that want something clean and simple. Um, and I'll have a tutorial on that here in another in a few days. So thanks.